Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome along to Crosspoint Online. Today we have a children's story for you, although it's really a story for all ages and also a Christmas message. But first of all, a short story. It's a little bit of a sad story, but it's also a good story because it's useful. We can learn things from this story, which makes it useful. Uh, so it's a story about a camel. Now, we all know about camels. Camels are actually quite amazing animals, aren't they? They have humps on their back and they can store you know, food and water inside their bodies, which helps them to survive for long periods of time, even out in the desert, even without water. So camels are quite extraordinary. But this particular camel, well, he wasn't content being a camel. One day he saw an elephant. And you know about elephants, they're also quite uh, amazing creatures, aren't they? And this particular, oh, you know, all elephants, you know, they're big and they're strong and they have that trunk, which, you know, they can do all sorts of amazing things with their trunk. And so the camel looked at the elephant and he said, wow, I wish I was more like an elephant. And you know what happened? He became a camelephant, which is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? He was still a camel, but he was like an elephant. And, you know, we really all should just enjoy being the way God designed us. But then this camelephant, he saw an antelope. And you know, antelopes are, are beautiful animals, aren't they? They're slender and, and graceful, and probably they're some of the things that you know, camels and elephants are not. And the camel saw the antelope and he said, wow, I wish I was more like an antelope. And you know what happened? He became a camelophantelope. And you know, some animals, just like some people, uh, you know, some people are, are tall and slender and graceful like an antelope, and that's really good. And other people are, are bigger and stronger and bigger muscles like, a, like an elephant. And that's also good. You know, we're all a little bit different, and that is actually a good thing. Well, after a while, the camelophantelope saw a pelican. Now, pelicans are also amazing creatures, aren't they? They've got that huge big beak, and they can carry food around in their mouth so they can, you know, have a snack any time they feel like it. And the camel saw this pelican and he thought, wow, I wish I was more like a pelican. And he became a camelophantelo pelican. Which I know this is getting kind of ridiculous. And, you know, animals, all animals have different abilities to each other, just as all people have different abilities to each other. And sometimes our abilities are called gifts. Now, gifts are great, aren't they? Who likes getting gifts? Yes, most people love to receive gifts. And, uh... Last week, the church uh, gave out, Crosspoint um, Cross gave gifts out to people, so we hope you liked that. Well, the camelophantelo pelican, he still wasn't happy. And then he heard some beautiful music, this wonderful sound of singing, and he went to hear what it was, and it was a little bird. It was a canary singing a beautiful tune. And the camel thought, wow, I wish I was more like a canary. And you know what happened? He became a camelophantelo pelicanary. And as I said, we all have different gifts, different talents. You know, some people are good at singing and music. Some people are good at sport. Some people are, some children are good at maths and some children are good at spelling. And some people are good at uh, making friends. Some people are good at keeping secrets. You know, we're all good at different things. And we don't have to worry about what other people are good at. We just need to appreciate that God designed us just the way we are. And we are good at certain things. Well... Next, the camel saw a yak. Now, camels often live in the desert, but yaks live in, in colder places, sometimes you know, high up in the mountains and in colder places. And so yaks have longer hair than camels. They have a thicker coat to keep them warm in colder temperatures. And the camel looked at the yak and he said, wow, I wish I was more like a yak. And so he became a camelophantelope pelicanary yak. But it's actually, when you think about it, a thick uh, you know, coat is actually not very helpful for a camel when you're out in the desert. It's only going to make him hot. And so just because other animals or other people might have something doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea for us. And actually the camel made a big mistake in wishing to be more like a yak. We all make mistakes in life sometimes, don't we? Sometimes we all do the wrong thing. Maybe you might make a mistake in your schoolwork. But sometimes we also do the wrong thing and we make mistakes and we hurt our friends or maybe our family. And sometimes other people make mistakes, other people do the wrong thing, and sometimes that really hurts us. And that's not nice, that's not fun. 
Well, the Camelophantalo Pelicanero Yak, he was still going, and he saw a kangaroo next. Now, as you know, kangaroos are also amazing animals. They can just jump right over fences. And the camel saw the kangaroo, and he said, Wow, I wish I was more like a kangaroo. And he became a Camelophantalo Pelicanero Yak kangaroo, which is getting kind of ridiculous, isn't it? You see, God gave all of us different gifts, different abilities, different talents. And at Christmas time, we remember the greatest gift of all, a gift given to us all by God, and that is the gift of Jesus. So at Christmas time, we remember the birth of Jesus. Jesus is the greatest person who ever lived, and he is the greatest gift. He's a gift that never wears out. He's a gift that never grows old. He is a friend who loves us. Jesus is a friend who can help us, encourage us, inspire us, and if we ask Jesus, he can forgive us for all of the mistakes we have ever made. He can forgive us for all of the wrong things we ever did, and he can even save our soul. And that is very exciting news. That is definitely something worth getting excited about. And that's why Jesus is the best gift, the greatest gift ever. You know, some people think Christmas is all about just the presents or the food or the, you know, or the holidays. But really, Christmas is about this one particular special gift, and that is the gift of Jesus. Well, the Camelophantalo Pelicanero, yeah, kangaroo, he was tired after a big day with, you know, lots of excitement and lots of changes, so he went to sleep. And in the morning, he woke up when he heard a sound. He heard, cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo. And it was a rooster crowing to announce to everyone that it was morning time. And so everyone heard the rooster and started to wake up. And the camel decided, wow, the rooster must be really, really important. Everyone listens to the rooster and, you know, and when the rooster crows, people start to wake up. And the camel thought, wow, I wish I was more like a rooster. And so he became a camelophantalo pelicanero yakanga rooster. And, you know, it is nice to feel important sometimes. Just like the camel thought the rooster was important. We all like to be noticed. We all like people to take notice of us, to listen to us. It is nice to feel important sometimes. But, you know, Jesus is the most important person who ever lived. Now, the good news is, from this story, is that the camelophantalo pelicanero yakanga rooster eventually learned his lesson. He realised he didn't have to be like all of the other animals. He was best at being a camel. So that's good news. And today I hope you can learn from the camel who wanted to be an elephant. Hope we can all learn that we don't need to be like other people because God designed us just the way we are. And God loves us just the way we are. And God gave us all different abilities, different talents and different gifts. But Jesus is the greatest gift of all. So at Christmas time, I do hope you enjoy uh, the, the gift you received from your church if you got one. Um, and I hope you never forget, I hope you always remember the greatest and most important gift of all, the gift of Jesus. Now we have a Bible reading which is going to help us to focus again on the true meaning of Christmas, and then we will explain a little bit more about why Jesus is so important. So now I'll hand over to Megan for the Bible reading. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The birth of Jesus the Messiah. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. 
but he did not have sexual relations with her until after her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Thank you, Megan, for reading God's word for us today. So that Bible reading is about the birth of Jesus, which is what we celebrate at Christmas time. Now, verse 18 of that, this, of that passage tells us that Mary became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is not the normal way to get pregnant. So clearly this birth was supernatural, which means this child was very special, obviously special. So why was this baby special? Now, there are two parts of the Bible. There is the Old Testament and the New Testament. So first is what we call the Old Testament, which is like a, a history book from creation, uh, all of the history of the world right up into the time of Jesus. All of the things that happened, uh, especially around the land of Israel, before Jesus was born. And then there's what we call the New Testament, uh, which is the story of Jesus, the story of his birth, his life, all the things that he said, all the things that he did, and some of the things that happened soon after Jesus was alive on this earth. Now, in the Old Testament, the part before Jesus, there were lots of prophecies, lots of predictions about things that were going to happen in the future. And lots of those prophecies were about a Messiah, a saviour, about a man who was going to come one day and save the world. This started right back in the very first book of the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, when God made a promise to a man called Abraham that one day all nations on earth would be blessed through one of Abraham's descendants. Uh, and Jesus was one of Abraham's descendants. Then about 700 years before Jesus was born, there was a prophet called Isaiah, and he prophesied that one day a, a virgin would give birth to a son, to a baby boy, and this child would be called God with us. And prophets also predicted that uh, this baby, this Messiah, that he would be, be born in Bethlehem, that he would be descended from King David, a whole bunch of other uh, predictions about this child uh, which were all fulfilled in the life of Jesus. So here we are at the start of the New Testament. Matthew's the first book of the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 1, an angel appears to Joseph in a dream and tells him that this baby that Mary is carrying, this is the one, this is the child, this is the one that the prophets were talking about. So this is very exciting news for God's people because people had been waiting so long for the arrival of this special child, for, of this Messiah. Of course, he was born as a child and he grew up uh, to be a man. And this child was the son of God. And this child was going to do extraordinary things in his life. In verse 21, the angel told Joseph that this child would save his people from their sins. Now, this was a very, very special prediction. Nobody else had ever done that. Nobody since Jesus has ever been able to do that. So this baby, who was called Jesus, was truly unique. So why was the baby so special? Because he would save his people from their sins. What does this mean? What does it mean to save people from their sins? We all have rules that we have to follow in this life, don't we? Uh, some rules are made by the government, some rules are made by parents, maybe some rules are made by schools. And rules are important. And there are consequences when we don't obey the rules. Now, rules are good. Rules are designed to be good. The government says that you have to drive safely on the roads, and that's a good rule because that keeps us all safe on the road. Unfortunately, of course, some people disobey the road rules and then people can get hurt. Now, the school has rules. The school says that, you know, you're not allowed to bully each other. And that's a good rule because that keeps us all safe from bullies. But, of course, some people don't obey the rules and that's not nice for the people who get bullied. And God also has rules for people to live by. In the Old Testament, there were lots of rules, lots of instructions that God gave his people for them to live by. And God's rules were designed for our benefit. God's rules are designed to protect us from each other. For example, God says we should always tell the truth, not to tell lies. God says you should treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. God says we shouldn't hurt each other. And these are all good rules. They're all sensible rules. So God has a, a standard of behaviour for everyone to follow, and it's a good 
standard. If, if we all followed God's standard, then we would all be safe. There would be no more bullies. There would be no more selfishness. There would be no more lies. So God's standard is good. And if everyone always obeyed all of God's rules, then the world would be much safer and much happier and much better. But unfortunately, people do not always obey God's rules. The Old Testament showed that no one, not one single person, could obey all of God's rules all of the time. Even the good people did the wrong thing some of the time. Even the best people broke the God's rules sometimes. And it's the same for us, isn't it? No matter how hard we try, we can never keep all of God's rules all of the time. Naturally, we keep on trying. We always do our best to obey God and to honour God. But eventually, we all break one of the rules some of the time. And if we're honest with, the, with ourselves, we break God's rules quite often. And the Bible says that breaking God's rules is called sin. And every time we break one of God's rules, we sin against God. Now, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 that everyone has sinned. Everyone has sinned. And we all fall short of that standard that God has set. Now, like I said before, there's always consequences when we do the wrong thing. If you disobey the rules at home, well, you might get in trouble from your parents. If you disobey the rules at school, well, you might get a detention or something. If you disobey the rules of the government, well, that could be really serious. You might have to pay a fine or maybe even have to go to jail. So there's always consequences. And if we, if we disobey God's rules, there are consequences for that also. And the Bible explains in Romans chapter 6 that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin, that means the consequences of sin, the, the results of sin is death. And that means this is talking about spiritual death. This is talking about separation from God, being separated from God for all of eternity. That's not a good thing. It's not a good place to be. That is bad news. All of us have sinned, okay? And if sin leads to death, then we're all in trouble, aren't we? Yes, we are. See, God made us and God loves us, but when we sin, every time we sin, we separate ourselves from God. God's perfect. God is holy, so when we sin, we we separate ourselves from him. We fail his standards and therefore we have to deal with the consequences and the consequences of sin is death and separation from God. So that's the bad news, but the rest of the verse is good news. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, so the good news is literally Jesus. Jesus was human. He was born of a woman, just like everyone else, but he was also God. And Jesus never sinned, never, ever. He was tempted to sin, just like all of us are, but he never disobeyed God. He never broke any of God's commandments. Jesus always did the right thing. And so even though by law we deserve to be punished for the consequences of our own sin, God sent Jesus, his son, to die in our place. 2 Corinthians explains for us, it says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God. So we're all guilty of sin, as we know. Uh, we deserve to face the consequences of our sin. The consequences of our sin is death, separation from God. But Jesus, who never sinned, Jesus, who is innocent, Jesus, this this very special child who grew up to be a man, Jesus, the perfect one, Jesus died in our place. Jesus took our punishment. Jesus took our consequences onto himself so that we can be made right with God again. This is really, really good news. It's great news. That is definitely news worth celebrating. And that is why Christmas is such a special occasion. That's why Christmas is special and worth celebrating. The Bible explains more in John chapter 3. It says, This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, Jesus, 
so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, will not have to face the consequences of their own sin, but will have eternal life, life in heaven with God. This is great stuff. Everyone who believes in Jesus will not perish, but will have eternal life. So that's what the Bible means when it says Jesus will save his people from their sins because Jesus did literally save his people from the consequences of their own sin. Now, there's just one more thing I need to explain. Has Jesus saved everyone from the consequences of their sin? Well, actually, no. So Jesus has made salvation, you know, forgiveness, except available to everyone, but the only ones who receive this gift are the people who choose to believe, people who choose to follow Jesus. Everyone who believes in Jesus will not perish but will have eternal life. But what about the people who choose not to believe? Well, God is fair, isn't he? God gives us a free choice. God gives us a free will. He doesn't force himself onto anyone. And so God, he provides the opportunity, but people still have a choice. And some people choose not to believe. Some people choose to reject God. Some people choose to face the consequences of their own sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 explains also, it says, We must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. So for the people who do not believe in Jesus, they will be faced with the consequences of their own sin, which means they will perish and they will be separated from God for all of eternity. They will be condemned, condemned to death by their own actions, by their own choices. But the people who believe in Jesus, people who believe in Jesus will listen to what Jesus says. That means that we're sorry for our sins. We repent of our sins. We turn away. We try to stop sinning. We we don't want to sin anymore because we want to obey Jesus all of the time. So people who do believe in Jesus, they're still sinners. They've still sinned, but their sin has been taken away because we believe. And Romans chapter 8 has a really great verse for us. It says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. No condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. We're not condemned for our own sin. So if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in what he did on the cross, if you confess your sin and ask him to forgive you, then you belong to Jesus, you are one of his people. And in that case, there is no condemnation. You are forgiven. You are, you are redeemed. You are saved. Jesus has saved you from your sins. So that is, this is great news and that is why we celebrate Christmas. You know, sometimes people can be distracted by all of the other things at Christmas, the presents and the food and the the family and the the holidays and the Christmas trees and all of the other things that people associate with Christmas. But at Christmas time, we celebrate the birth of Christ, the birth of Jesus, a very special birth and the beginnings of an extraordinary life, the most important life. Jesus, the Son of God, was born of a virgin fulfilled all of the prophecies. He grew up to be a man. He died on the cross. He came back to life, and now he's gone to heaven to prepare a place for all his people. Jesus did exactly what the Bible said he would do, and that includes what the angel told Joseph, that he will save his people from their sins. And that, for us, is the best news of all. That is why this is the best story in the history of the world. So have a very, very happy Christmas because Jesus has saved his people from their sins. Amen? Amen. Let's all pray. Father God, we just want to say thanks. Thanks again for the gift of Christmas. I pray that you all give us a greater understanding of uh, who Jesus is and, and what he did for us. Thank you that Jesus has done something that we could never do for ourselves. Help us, the Lord, to understand, to believe, to repent, 
and to follow you. And I pray that everyone listening will, will not only hear these words, but they will understand the truth of your word and that they will believe. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you again another time.